I said he's gone. What I've got here. Uh, I've been working away at these lights on the honcho. Uh, now they come with the RTR bag of parts that you get. Obviously they come with the kit as well. You don't actually get the inserts to put those lights in like I've seen a lot of other people do. Uh, I could have rubbed the uh, paint off using some uh, dot four brake fluid. I could have rubbed the paint away using that. But I decided to go with this look. I don't think it looks too bad. Uh, let us know what you think. I think it looks all right. I've done a little bit of tinting on the windows. First time I've done any tinting on an RC truck, and I've got to say, I had to do it twice. Uh, the first time I wasn't happy with it, so I removed the paint, did it again. Not too bad this time. But what this video is actually about, instead of drumming on about this, uh, making lights for your RC truck or car, in this case, the honcho. I'm just gonna go through and show you how I do it. Now I use resistors, 10 ohm resistors. Um, it just saves me the trouble of blowing out $5 LEDs. I like to buy the expensive ones, nice and bright. Uh, they're kind of like a torch. But anyways, I'll bring these in a bit closer and give you a look at the process that I uh, go through to put them together. And I've got to apologise for the glare too, so it's just too hot near to have it closed up. I'll bring these in and give you a look. Alright guys, I'll just run you through what I'll be using. We've got my old soldering iron there. It's a dirty old thing. Holds the solder really well. Can't beat a classic. Uh, some shrink tube, various sizes there. Neaten it all up. Now I've got some uh, good crees just here. Now them fellas here cost me five bucks a pop. Uh, they were off an older build that I didn't actually end up using. So I'll be tidying those up and uh, two of them will be going into the front just here. Of the honcho. Into these uh, big driver's lights. Now I've got some speaker wire there. A uh, three volt battery box. Uh, some bezels. They've got crees in them at the moment, but I'll remove those. Now, those two red lights here, these guys, little plastic fellas, um, they've got halogen lights of some sort in there. Now, I'll be removing those. I did them on the Summit build as well. Um, they'll be more tail lights. As you can see, I've got two red crees there ready to go. A pack of eight 10 ohm resistors. Uh, I've got a little switch there as well. So this is basically what I'll be using. I'll get into it anyways. Right, so what I've got here is the lights that I used on the previous project. Now, I've already gone ahead and removed the third light off this. Uh, I've also taken the Dean's plug off the end, just here. And what I'll be doing is I'll be running the rear lights. The uh, positive wire off the rear lights will be run onto this. The negative will be run onto this as well. Splice these together, run it into one single uh, red positive and one single black negative and then I can connect up to that again uh, so what I'll go ahead and do before I go any further with this is I'll just make sure that this little unit here will fit the front lights and I'll have enough room to run it to where I need it to be so I'll just grab the body flip him over uh, this is pretty easy because I've already got the lights in place or the bezels are in place so I'll just put the leads in there I can already tell that this is going to fit wants to stay in there. See, so I'm actually going to run the uh, lights and have them sit inside the cab, just behind the seats. So that'll work. Just want to make sure you've got enough room for it. It doesn't matter if you've got an uh, excess lead. More lead is better than not enough. So then you're going to have to go back to the drawing board and start all over again. So what I'll do is I'll uh, get on to making the rear lights anyway. All right, so I've got my negative wire me positive wire just there. Now I'll be putting the resistors on the positive side. Depending on what type of resistor you've got, it doesn't really matter what way you put it. These ones can go either way, either side. Uh, 10 ohm resistors. These guys just here, they seem to work a treat. Uh, I'll put the details in the description box. And what you want to do is, I've, uh, before I tin them, I've gone and measured it up, so that way I can work out exactly where my resistor's going to have to sit once I've trimmed up the LED. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and tin these two wires. I'll get that done. Now the reason you didn't see me use any solder there is I had plenty on the end of this soldering iron holds heaps on it. So what I'm going to do, 
go ahead and get this measured up. Right, that's where I need to be there. Measured that. Now I'll just go ahead and cut the excess off. A little bit onto that. Here comes the fun part. Let's put a little bit more on the end of this. It's not exactly the best of solder. It's good enough for just quickly on camera. I'll clean it up before I actually go ahead and attach it. So I've got that done now. Now what I want to do is grab the shrink tube. You want to cut that. It doesn't matter how much you use. Like I said, more is better than not enough. Slide that over. The reason I'm doing this now is because once I put the lead on, I won't be able to get to it, obviously. So there we go. Basically ready to get on with the lead. I'm just going to clean up that join a little bit better anyway, guys. All right, so I've gone and cleaned up that little sloppy join there. Uh, now you want to remember with these, longer side's always positive. Um, keep that in mind, you won't have any dramas. So what I'm going to want to do now is match this up with the positive side, the longer side over here. Once again, measure. Now if you don't get this exactly right, it's okay because you can always split it apart and then uh, even it up further down the line on your wire here. I just find it easier to get it right from word go. Right, so if I just cut this to fit, like that, just measure that up. Now I want to remember to keep one side longer, the positive side I must keep longer that way I don't go and forget which is which, so I have done that before, and that sucks. Nothing worse than trying to put some lights together and you destroy your LEDs, especially when they're costing you five bucks a pop, it's not much good. You end up in a bit of trouble to be honest with you with the cook. Righto. So I've measured that up. What I'm going to do here now is uh, just apply a bit of solder to both of them. Probably don't have to. I imagine they've got a bit on them already. I just find it helps. Now I do it this way because this old soldering iron, like I've said before, holds just enough on there for me to work with. That's why I like it. Right, awesome. Now I'll get this attached. A bit more onto the end there. Okay. Alright, I believe that's good enough. I'm just getting fussy with it now. Alright, sweet. So, there you go. Resistor, LED, sorry about the focus, I'll bring it up closer. Got my resistor running on the positive side there. I'll go ahead and shrink that. I'll just run that up over the top. Done. Now I'm ready to uh, do the same on this side with no resistor. Too easy, guys. You follow this process, you get your lights put together in no time. So I'll go ahead and do this one. Alright, same story. I'm going to want to cut a bit of tube. This doesn't matter if it's red stuff, you'll know what's what. You've got a black line that runs down your wire anyway. Okay, slide that over. Bring this up to the LED. Now it's a good thing I've got that shrink tube on here because things are going to get pretty hot here. And it's going to shrink into place. Probably not a bad idea to shrink it down before you do this. I'm in a bit of a hurry, guys, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, I'm just going to press that down. Grab a hold. I'm sure there are people out there who can do it a lot neater than me. 
There we go. Ready to go on. One LED. Ready to be uh, joined up and fitted with the other guy. And I'll run those two in together. I'll run them into a single wire. And then be ready to be attached to the other guys. Or we'll get it hooked up to the uh, battery box anyway. So uh, if you can follow that, you shouldn't have any dramas with doing these guys. I'll get on to the next stage. Now depending on where you're going to run these LEDs, your uh, tail lights. Now I'm going to have them sitting either side just here. So what I've gone and done is I've measured them up underneath here. So what they're going to do is they're going to sit under there in the light buckets that I've got provided for them. And they're actually going to run through into the centre here around the back and go through a small hole in the back of the body and sit inside the cab. So uh, you just want to measure them up, first of all. That way you know where you're going. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and join these two together. Okay, so uh, before I go and tin them, there is one thing else I actually do like to do here. Um, I'm going to shrink them down. And then what I'm going to do is run some of this uh, larger black tube, shrink tube. The length of it, not all the way, probably to about there. The idea of that is, is it just tidies it up underneath the cab so you can't see that grey cord. Uh, it should keep it nice and protected, like I said, tidied up as well. So I'll go ahead and shrink these down and apply this. Alright, so I've gone and cut the shrink tube to fit. I've shrunk these down, just using the cigarette lighter. Now what I'll do is I'll just slide it over the top. You don't have to do this, but like I said, I think it neatens things up. Protects your lights anyway, as you can see. Now I'm not going to shrink that down yet because I still want to be able to bend and move it where I want it. Uh, you can do that after. The problem is you're going to have to heat it up to move it again. So I'll apply these. Alright, so I measured up that other lot of wire. Now what I'm going to do is just join these together. Making sure that the negative is joined to the negative and the positive is joined to the positive. If you get it wrong... You will certainly find out when you turn on your battery box. So, just join them together. Quick touch with the soldering iron. Careful not to burn myself. Which, trust me, I have done numerous occasions and it's not fun. It sucks. Leaves you with no fingertips. Alright. Bit of this thin solder on. Bit stingy on the solder here today. I need to go and pick some up. That's a long driveway. Right, well that'll do. They're joined together. All right, so I've got my uh, backlights there. I've gone and cut and measured the wire that I need to run to my battery box. So I've got my front lights here. What I'm going to do is uh, connect these guys together, making sure that I uh, put the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. As you can see, I've gone and applied some uh, tube, some shrink tube just to there. That way I can um, put it on after. Actually, I'll take that off because I shouldn't have that there at the moment, sorry. What I'll do is I'll just uh, solder these two guys together. Let's do a bit of solder on the end of this. Plenty, a little bit messy, but it'll do the job, that's for sure. What I'll do is I'll just put a bit over there. Shouldn't really put it on while it's hot in case it shrinks, but it'll be fine at the moment. Now I'll go ahead and join the positive side to the uh, positive wires at the back. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to join this positive wire here to the uh, grouped positive wires that I've got there. I'll join this up. This will run to the battery box. The reason I'm doing this is because I plan on using a uh, Dean's plug. Now, I could connect the Dean's plug just there, but I think it's going to make things a little bit tight when it comes to moving them. And like I said, it's good to have plenty of wire. Plenty of wire is better than not enough. So if I can just get this to get a bit of a bite. Beautiful. Got that one done. 
Now, I did have another one around here. There we go. Negative. Put that onto the group negative wires. Should have enough solder there to melt it all together. Beautiful. Great. So there we go. My two leads that are going to run. I've got my front lights there. My rear lights. Two leads that are going to run to my battery box. Now what I'll do is I'll uh, go ahead and put some of this shrinking tube over the top. Let's get a bit larger stuff than that. What I might do is put some of this on first. Under the smaller wire. Put it onto the single stuff just there. Put that over the top. Those ones up to there. Now I'll just cut a little bit longer piece of that. Uh, about the same size. Like I said, I might be uh, overkilling it. Some people out there are probably thinking I may be going over the top with this shrinking tube. But hey, if you've got it sitting around and you don't mind using the stuff, why not? Make sure everything's uh, insulated nicely, nice and protected anyways. All right, so I'll go ahead and hit that with the lighter, shrink it down. Try not to burn myself again. I never seem to put these lights together without burning myself. Always end up with a uh, new tough sticker from doing it anyway. Scars, in other words. All right, so that's done. What I'll do is uh, get this sorted out. Put that little Dean's plug on. You could use something that's a lot smaller. I've just got it laying around. It's easy to use, so I'll uh, go ahead and tin the ends of these. Get it prepared. Before I do that, though, I'm going to want to run some of this tube up here. I'm not going to use these pieces. If you want to run some of this up there, that way you can slide it back over it when you're finished anyway. So I'll go ahead and do that, guys. All right, uh, so that's about it. Right there, ready to go. Just got to run those over the top. Uh, as you can see, I've got the shrinky tube up here. I'll uh, run that over the top of the join. All right, so I've got my Dean's plug on there. And I put a bit of shrink tube on it. Uh, another good reason for using so much shrink tube is if your soldering looks like sparrow shit, you can use that to cover it up and it makes it look all professional. So I love this stuff, just for that reason alone. Uh, now the battery box, little three volt battery box just here. I'll go ahead and put the other Dean's plug on the end. Um, I'll do that off camera. I'm sure you guys uh, by now know what I'm on about with this anyway. So I'll get that done, plug it in, see if it all works. Fingers crossed anyway. No, thumbs up, it'll work. I'll get it done for you guys. All right, so I've got it all connected up. Got my resistors on, everything else is on, ready to go. Got my lights, things, plugs. Let's just uh, get this connected up, see what happens. Switch him on. Beautiful. Nice and bright too. I'm on a blind, just give you a look. Super bright crease. That's why I use resistors. Uh, they look good anyway, so I'll get them put on the honcho should be okay anyway guys so that's it if you've got any questions comment like subscribe if you like what you've seen uh check out the other videos as well if you've got a video that you want to share with me i'm more than happy to post it on the page so uh make yourself known anyway guys all right guys happy RCing.